Deidre Kelsey, and you're watching Sister Talk TV Show. Our guest is the Honorable Carmen Quinones, who's running for City Council in District 7. Carmen Quinones, Honorable Quinones, thank you, thank you for gracing the set of Sister Talk TV Show. Now, before we begin, I want you to briefly tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, well, what about me? Uh, I am a grandmother of 19 grandkids uh, and 12 great grand. I am the president of Douglas Houses, uh, the third largest public housing in all of New York City for the last 12 years. Um, and now I am running for city council, I've been a former Democratic district leader, mm -hmm. former state committee woman, uh, and uh, ran in 2000 for the state assembly. Uh, and I've been here ever since running. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So you, yeah. are, you could say you're a lifelong political activist, I would say. Just Yes, I've been an activist now for 35 years, actually. 35 years. Well, yeah. You, before we get into the questions and answers and all that, could you just tell us a little bit about what is the job of a city council? Well, actually, the city council, uh, well, we hold every city agency accountable uh, to doing their jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually one of the most, um, uh, one of the most prominent positions that you can have. Uh, from the school system to the housing authority, um, mm -hmm. you know, and all public agencies, ACS, uh, you know, and so, you know, it's very important for us to get all these agencies in line. Um, as you know, we are going through a really rough, rough time. Uh, mental illness is at an all time high. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, it's about getting that city council to do the work of the people. Okay, so why are you running for city council? Because that sounds like a lot of responsibility. Well, it is. And I, I, I again, I've been doing this for 35 years. You know, I started with the late Angelo Del Toro I, um, and Olga Mendez. I come from the Charlie Rango era, which, um, you know, I have helped more people get elected uh, than I can count. Um, from, you know, Obama, where I went to Ohio to make sure he was elected, uh, mm -hmm. been in the trenches. You know, I started with Shockton when I was 17 years old. Um, so I've been in the trenches, but why I'm running was because of the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic showed me how vulnerable um, we were um, and how the desperation in the eyes of our seniors um, was something that I never wanted to see again. Um, and I saw the disparity of what was going on and how people were getting hungry. As, as we speak right now, uh, you know, I just had, a, I still have people on the line getting food. I'm giving out food. Yesterday we gave out food, we're giving out food again. Thursday we're giving out 17,500 pounds of food. Uh, and I'm, and again, I don't stop what I'm doing just because I'm running for city council. And this is what I'm trying to say. You know, when you are doing God's work, you have to continue God's work. And that's what we're doing. Uh, but the pandemic showed me how vulnerable we were and how alone we were. Uh, mm -hmm. And being a grandmother of 19 grandchildren and 12 great grand, I knew I had to run. I, I knew that, you know, we had to we had to do something. We were all alone out here. Okay, could you briefly describe that when you, you mentioned something about the how the pandemic, how the elders were uh, treated? Can you just give us a couple of examples of, of what do you mean by that? Okay, well, as you know, um, in public housing, we uh, our mayor, Mayor De Blasio, which you know, I can't, I'm glad he's leaving. Um, but, you know, they were supposed to deliver food to the people of all New York City Housing Authority and they didn't do so. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been, I've been, like I said, in the trenches 35 years and I had to like really lean on different people that I knew, um, restaurants and stuff to give me food. Um, and so I, I thank God because it's God's work. 
um, that these people entrusted me to give me food. And through that, I wind up not only feeding Douglas houses, but 12 different other developments uh, in in uh, this, you know, in the district from the Bronx to lower Manhattan. Um, so, you know, um, we were alone. We were desperately alone. I created the heroes. My heroes are here in Douglas. Uh, everyone belongs to um, a building. And we took it upon ourselves to make sure we knocked on every door and make sure that our seniors were, were, were fed. We saw a lot of bodies coming out of our um, our our home, and you know, it just reminded me of um, Hurricane Maria. Hurricane Maria, I was stuck in Hurricane Maria. My father was dying, and I had to go to Puerto Rico. My father died that Tuesday, and that Wednesday, Hurricane Maria hit. I was stranded for 14 days. I didn't know if I was going to live or die. I learned how to uh, bathe in rainwater, um, and I learned how to give away my food. Now, mind you, I have lupus. I wasn't supposed to do that, but God is just so such an awesome God. Um, he saved us from that. But coming back to New York, I saw the same devastation that was happening in my isla, Puerto Rico. And I saw the same devastation happening here with the pandemic. And that was when I made up my mind. I said, we were alone. People were dying. People were hungry. And I couldn't think of myself. I had to think of my people. And so that's what we've been doing for now for the three years, even though we were giving food before that, but for the pandemic, and we still have not stopped. Um, and we were alone. There was no elected officials helping us at all. Okay, let's talk about NYCHA, okay? Um, the residents of NYCHA has been living with no heat during the winter. Yes. Uh, funding issues have called uh, really horrible floods during the summer. Okay, according to NYCHA Chairman Greg Ross, it's going to take $40 billion to repair NYCHA, NYCHA housing. We're talking about 110,000 units. That's right. Okay. How mm -hmm. are you going to keep accountable for who's in charge to put money well, in NYCHA? I uh, think the first thing. The first thing we have to do is clean house of New York City Housing Authority. Greg Russ is um, receiving $400,000 a year. Those $400,000 a year should be going for repairs. We are, I, am, I am not for a privatization of public housing because um, private uh, public housing should be public, but I am for um, what we call resident management and home ownership. Uh, we have the right from the 964 regs that we are governed by, that we have the right to own our own home. And so those, those 964 regs are from HUD. And so we need to make sure that our, um, our constituency know uh, about those 964 regs, which we have been fighting for. As a matter of fact, we just had a rally up in 26 uh, Federal Plaza where we shut uh, uh, Greg Russ down. We have shut it down for now. There is not going to be any um, further RAD, uh, PAC, or the blueprint because we shut them down last week. Um, so, you know, we just have to keep out there. Uh, my message is that New York City Housing Authority residents, we are a city. And if we all come out and vote, we can shut them down. We already shut them down, but we got to come out and vote because that is what the problem is. They don't think or they have said that New York City housing residents don't vote. Well, we need to show them the power now and we need to elect uh, residents that are from New York City Housing Authority to get into City Hall and stop the corruption that is now. As you know, uh, when this was run by um, uh, Shola Alate, she lied in front of the city council. They documented, um, false reports. Um, kids were, were literally dying of lead. No one has gone to jail. You know, Detroit, if that would have been me and you, we would have been under the jail. And so what's happening is the corruption is really deep. Um, and, and I think that's why uh, they're trying to shut me down because, you know, activists, man, we don't care. We tell it like it is. And activists have it very hard, especially here in New York City. When you tell the truth, when you tell God's truth, everybody wants to come down on you. Yes. Yeah. You well, know, 
I want to ask you more about that. Okay, his, his thing is that it's $40 billion. That is, is too much. And what I'm gathering just from what I read is that the city cannot afford to do that. So he wants to do public-private partnership. Right. So from what I understand, he wants to put in force the voucher program, which is known as Section 8. And yeah, public, honey. And, and, um, and I guess what we would call uh, private. Tell me what is wrong with that. Let me, let me tell you. Um, what is happening with, with now. Right now, people that live in NYCHA are under Section 9. Uh, do, Section 9 gives us, uh, we are protected by Section 9. And so the blueprint that you're talking about, um, actually what it does is put you in Section 8. Section 8, as you know, it closes all the time. Um, Section 8 leaves everyone vulnerable because they'll give you a lease for a year. And that following year, they don't have to give you that lease. And you can see that in Ocean Bay right now. The evictions have skyrocketed. And so that's what they're doing. They want to give you Section 8 so that you can be homeless the following year. And so we're saying no to the blueprint. We're saying no to RAD. We're saying no to PAC. And we're saying yes to resident management and home ownership. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the homelessness okay you're holding the officials accountable let's talk about that according to the coalition uh for the homeless over the course of city physical year 2020 over a hundred thousand different homeless men women and children slept in new york city shelter system this includes more than forty thousand homeless mm -hmm. children and i think really that's that's a small i think it's small i think it's more than that but um what, what are your thoughts on that what uh, how would you hold them okay well again again um it's about you know making sure that public housing stays public mm -hmm. um you know the warehousing of the apartments that they're doing now mm -hmm. uh they say warehousing what do you mean by warehousing? warehousing in other words when uh apartments are are um when people move out of them they take those houses and they don't put them back on the stock market. They don't put them back. And so what they do is they save it for people that have right now, um, you know, paying rent is, I mean, now, right now, the ceiling rent is 25000 They think people in public housing do not pay rent. Let me tell you something. We got white collar. We got everything in here. Um, and so what what it is is that there are those apartments are not being used those i mean we have a waiting list oh god over 20 years that waiting list um and they're not moving people in what they're doing is putting in people that they can control um mm -hmm. and homelessness is at an all-time high because of pat rad and uh the blueprint uh you know when you start uh choosing to privatize and not renew leases, that's where homelessness comes in. And we have to talk about homelessness because as a school teacher, I worked for Kaplan, fifth and sixth grade of math. And um, I had so many um, kids from the shelter, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not being looked at. How can a kid learn in school if he doesn't have a bed to sleep in? So when we talk about the homeless, the homeless and the shelters and all of that, we're talking about housing because they cannot function if they don't have proper housing. And so the, um, it's almost like a, a domino effect, right? It, uh, it, it, everything is uh, subject to someone owning a home, someone having a bed to sleep in. Right. Uh, you got, you know, we got trafficking of kids. We got so much going on that people are not daring to talk about. Okay, right. Let's, let's talk about that. Then. Let's talk about the. OK, let's talk about homeless and mental illness. How does that correlate? Well, let me tell you something. Um, uh, like I said, mental illness is really big, especially here in public housing. I've had like five um, suicides, um, five people jumping off, the, suicide, um, yeah, jumping somebody, off the roof. I think in Brooklyn, a young woman, she jumped out with two of her kids. 
One was yeah. four years old, uh, young uh, little girl, baby, I should say. Yes, She's it was both of them. Yeah. yeah. And, and here, little... right here, in, right mm -hmm. here in Douglas, we've had um, six jumps uh, in eight twenty-five. <laughs> Um, and what I what I had to do was I had to bring in the mel the mental illness team to come and and check out our our people because mental illness is very alive, you know. In our community. You talk, yeah, you, in our community, in our home. Okay, and if we don't, go ahead. Yeah, and if we don't address that now, um, you know, our young people are going through so much. It's not only um the adults, but our children. Our young men and so our you, young women. So I'm surprised you see that in District Seven. Matter of fact, how? What is the the regional uh, regional uh, region of District Seven? I know it's from, uh, you. You have Manhattan Valley, Washington Heights. It's all the way up to Hamilton Heights. Okay. Fine. Yes. So, yeah. So mental, uh, you know, I'm, mental I'm, illness I'm, has to be addressed. Yeah. So mental illness is not really supported. That's, that's right. in our community. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so what I did was um, I called the hotline um, and, and I called for counselors to come in. Um, and we've, we've had that here in Douglas. But, you know, it's only one complex. We have a lot of um, presidents that, can't, that don't do this, right? That, that don't do the work, right? Remember, this is, this is um, a volunteer job. Nobody gets paid for this. Um, I've been doing this for 12 years like that, but, um, you know, we need to make sure that we get into all housing authority, uh, and make sure that mental illness, uh, counselors are knocking on doors. We have a lot of, um, seniors that are alone. All they depend on is their home attendance. Some don't speak English. Uh, okay. You know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do better. We have to do so much better. Well, and our elected officials have have abandoned us. And that is why we need to run. The people. It's about the people. Mm -hmm. The people need to run. Just like me and you. When my people don't have hot water, guess what? Neither do I. When their pipes break, mines break. That's what we need in City Hall. Okay. The real is what we need in City Hall. Okay. What about the, as a, uh, a city council person, what about the, the trash, the rats? <laughs> you know, I call one little park that's near me, Rat, Ratville. I feel like they go across the streets yeah. with me. Uh, they have their family with me and all that. That's, that's a problem also. Well, you because see that in... You see that in a lot of the developments. Um, I have been very fortunate to have a very good group. Um, even the people that do work for housing, I stay on their butt, you know. So um, we, our development, um, I can say is one of the best, mm -hmm. right? Because we're politically involved um, and we make sure people do what they gotta do. I'm on that phone in a minute, honey. They call me from different developments, Carmen, please help me. You know, mm -hmm. um, so I have presidents that are not doing their job and they call me and this has been going on for a long time. And that's why I need to get into that city council. I need to make sure uh, I don't know what I'm going to expect in the city council. So I make no promises because I don't know what's in there. We need to find out what's going on in there in order to help our people. Okay, that sounds very good. It sounds like you have a passion. You're determined to do what you have to do to stop God's work to stop the madness and all that what about your support team how do you how do you do this do you have any support at all within the uh the NYCHA development that uh, people yeah. that are being paid for that yeah yeah I have um I I adore my, I, I adore Douglas so much. I mean, you know, when I came to Douglas, um, we came from the east side. I'm an Albaro girl. Um, mm -hmm. and we got burned out of our apartment. Um, and we were separated like for five years in the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And they gave my mother this apartment almost 35 years ago already. And I remember her kissing the ground. And I've been here ever since. I've got five generations in this apartment. And so this is very dear to me. I am very grateful to God mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. that we have a home and brought our family together. That's why I'm running for District 7, because I owe them so much, you know, mm-hmm. for generations in keeping us together and bringing us together. And we want to bring that out. Um, you know, my, my idea is um, doing task force, and I hope that they follow um, in the city council. But in every district, we need to make task force for housing task force um, for the criminal justice system, for the public safety is a big issue, right? And so we need um, task force of citizens, not of community boards and other people and elected officials. We need the people that live in a district to run their district. To run their district, yes. Uh, basically, um, like you're saying, just people just really need to try to work together. How do you get these people to work together? before we Building work- bridges. Building bridges. And by that, what do you mean? Building bridges. We have so many CBOs in our district. We need to make sure that we partner with them. We need to make sure our businesses are running. We lost so many small businesses in this pandemic. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that all of us are partners and that we all are looking out for each other. No one is better than anyone. And we all need each other at the end of the day. And so building bridges... Is, is, is my motto, building bridges and each one teach one. And that's what we have to do. Um, we have to stop, um, you know, we have to stop slamming each other down. We need to be building each other up. And so that's my, that's my vision uh, for District 7 uh, is to build bridges, make sure our CBOs are well taken care of, our public schools are just as good as our charter schools, so that when our children go to a school, they can be proud of any school that they walk into, any school. One more thing, going back to the homelessness and all that, because yeah. uh, and the safety, uh, do you think homelessness leads to mental illness? I know you talk about the children coming to school not getting enough sleep, um, yes. not getting yes. breakfast and what have you. Yes, um, yes. What about the yes. adults? The adults. The adult sweetheart, if you let me tell you something, I get insomnia at night. I it's hard for me to go to sleep. I think I go to sleep like maybe four o'clock in the morning because my mind is constantly running. Um sometimes I don't know how to turn it off. Mm-hmm. Um and so if I'm like that, right? You can imagine someone that doesn't have a bed to sleep in. Hmm. Can you, I, I can't, I can't, I know what it is because like I said before, uh, we had a fire. We were separated for five years. Mm-hmm. My mother had five children. I know what it is not to have a bed. I know what that is. I know what it is not to, ha- not, not to have water because of Hurricane Maria. I know what it is to give up my food so that an elderly person can have it. So, you you know, we have to know what this is in order to tackle it. And that is why activism is the best thing in the world. We need activists in the city council. We need to stop electing people that have sold us out. Mayor de Blasio has sold us out. Uh, As you know, uh, um, Hillary Clinton, let me tell you something about Hillary. On January uh, 28, 1996, referred to black and Latino youth as super predators. What what year was that again? That was 1996. It was on C-SPAN, the video clip. Mm -hmm. Um, It is uh, C-SPAN.org, a video, uh, Hillary Clinton campaign speech. Um, And she called our black and Latinos uh, super predators. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of black people voted for her. Black people voted for her. I know. I know. Do you and think so these, because of that, do you think that she has a change of heart? You know, do you, think you know what? You, I, I just I just don't believe in that because if you, you know, do a history check on her, you'll mm-hmm. see that she hasn't changed. Clinton's uh 2014 tax return show 14 of 41 speeches she gave in two in 2013 were the Wall Street banks according to political fact, right? She was paid two hundred and twenty-five thousand for most of them. She was paid two hundred and sixty thousand for one speech to Duce Bank. 
In other words, even before she was running for president, Hillary, she was already in Wall Street's pocket. Mm. See, our people have to read, read. Bill de Blasio has made it his business to demolish public housing. Anyone that is supported by these two people, you already know that they're part of the establishment, that these people are their puppets. And we need to stop electing people like that. They're killing us. They're killing our children. We need to stop. Okay, we're about to go on video break. And it's your video of your campaign. And before we, uh, we bring the video up, can you explain what it really is all about? Sure. Um, I have a grassroots campaign. My residents are on board. Uh, we also had the American Idol, uh, Just Sam K. She flew in from LA to come and support us. Um, and we- why, she, why did she do that? Cause she grew up in Douglas houses. Oh, right. I had uh, actually, I had her. Since, yes, I had her since she was eight years old. Okay. And um, and if you know her story, um, her story resonates with everybody else. Um, and so her home is Douglas, and she wanted to come, and she wanted to support Douglas and the residents here. Mm -hmm. um, I called her, and she said, "No, I said your people need you. Right. This is getting very ugly." Is we know okay. politics is real ugly. Well, we stopped at a polling site right here in Douglas, and I I couldn't even control them. The residents reacted so badly. Um, they they reacted, um, and they have every right to be because this is their home, and you cannot come in someone's home and disrespect them. Okay, we'll be right back with that. We're going to elaborate on that some more. Okay, so we're going to show the video and. We'll be right back and enjoy it. They are gone. Once they pick up these posters and they let them go, they're not going to be here anymore. They're here just to get a vote. They're not really here for you. Carmen Quinones, City Council, Douglas Houses. Y'all better go outside and vote for change. Don't sell yourself short. Know what you're Carmen King on the city council. Look what they did. They came out here and just posted all over our property. They don't care. They don't care about us. Ripping down what our posters. Say? What else have they been doing? Nothing. Nothing. Where have they been through the pandemic? Nothing. Nowhere. Not here. They're here now because they need your vote to sell us out, to sell housing, to take housing right away from y'all. That's house. right. Over 35 years, she has got, she has got that school over there built, built. For over 35 years, this woman has been here for they you, this community, this community. That's right.
That's right. That's right. I'm telling you, from the top of New York to the bottom, any housing authority she is fighting for, any NYCHA conflict she is fighting for. That's right. She wants it. Who are you voting for? She knows that. That's the first thing I told her. You I can't even vote. You can't vote. She you know what I do now? Family. And you know why? Because people are trying to show me that way. That's right. No matter where she goes, she says, oh, Douglas, yeah. Douglas. Yeah. No matter what she's talking about, she oh, Douglas, the people. No matter how sick, how in pain she is. That's right. How tired she is. You know where she is? Fighting for Douglas. Even That's if she right. Okay, was that the right video? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I rather I want to hear a lot of more of Sam uh, and, and the residents because what she says is very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, what she says is you you guys didn't even bring us water um, and or food. Okay, and, so we'll, we'll look into that. So I'm gonna okay. go ahead and continue this. Yeah. 
all this stuff will be added. So, um, hi, we're back. <laughs> we just watched the campaign trail of Carmen, the Honorable Carmen Kinoya. Kinoya, no. We just watched the campaign trail of Carmen Quinones. So, what do you think about that? Well, that was really, really something that was inspiring for the young lady to come back from American Idol all the way from LA to, yeah. to support your campaign. How do you feel yeah. about that? Well, you know, honored, honored, um, because her grandmother's still here. They're still living here. Mm. Okay, fame did not change them. Mm -hmm. um, they're still here in Douglas. And so this is their home. And they have every right uh, to protest when people come and disrespect their home. Disrespect, okay, I understand that. Okay, um, let's talk about job. We talked about that earlier today. You said mm -hmm. that, I would say this, the world is changing. Yes. And it's going to be the quote unquote new jobs that are coming in. Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? And how can we um, train our, the young people that are coming in into mm -hmm. the job market and the people that are in the job market now? Um, what are your thoughts all about that? Because now they're using robots and so forth. Well, actually, um, we've started uh, two programs. Um, solar paneling um, is one of them that our children need to know what climate change is all about. And we need to make sure that there's training for all of the type of uh, solar paneling and uh, electricians. We need to bring everything back that um, matters. Uh, we also started OSHA classes where we got 50 uh, residents off the street that are now working for construction. Uh, and we continue to do that. And it's about training. Uh, right. We have to train them. We have to train them in computers and uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Everything now, as you know, is technology. Um, and the biggest thing is climate change and mm -hmm. um, public safety. And mm -hmm. so those are the three main things that we really would like to do. Mm -hmm. um, I started a youth patrol back in 2000 where um, our kids uh, took the training for patrolling. Uh, we need to patrol our own homes um, mm -hmm. along with the police department uh, so that the citizens can uh, collaborate with our police department. Um, and, it's, and it's been working. Um, I got a hold of Minister uh, Conrad Tilner um, when he used to be in the Maz. I remember bringing the Maz in when they took our housing police. And so these are all the groups we need to bring back uh, because these, this is what works. And again, it's about community. It's about building bridges. Well, and we need to do that. I want to rewind. So they took, okay, I, I did not know this. They yeah. took the housing police out of public housing? Yes, what they housing. did, what they did was they merged the police department along with housing police. And so we lost our housing police. I mean, it's not like we don't have our PSAs, but it's not the same thing. And so they took so many um, of the rights away uh, of, of our housing police. Um, so, the housing, so the housing police knows the people more than yes. the police. Yeah. They're, they're really part of that community. They're part of the community. People know them. Uh, we do have some great B cops here because uh, I fight very hard for my police department, I'm going to tell you. I, I My PSA um, six officers, uh, housing police are the best. Um, mm -hmm. The community knows them. And they have their numbers, you know, um, mm -hmm. and those are the things we need to keep bringing back um, and making sure that our community and our police are working together. Okay, let's talk about, okay, since we're talking about police, let's talk about defunding the police. What are your thoughts on that? That's a big drive. A lot of people um, say, yeah, let's defund the police. Then you have the other side, which is majority are saying, no, we don't need to defund the police because of the crime. The crime rate is so high right now. What are your thoughts on that? 
Well, I, I um, you know, I have police officers in my uh, family also. My daughter's a detective and my son is actually a sheriff in Orangeville County in Atlanta. Um, I also have a son in uh, the 32nd precinct, which used to be like the worst precinct in the world. Mm -hmm. um, listen, I really believe in reforming, reforming our police department, mm -hmm. um, teaching the sensitivity, uh, but making sure that they partner with the community. I don't believe in defunding the police. I don't think that's the answer. Um, if we uh, get a hold of the corruption within um, New York City Housing Authority and other agencies, we will find that money that we are missing. People are, are lining up their pockets now. Um, the police department, ever since the, they started with this defunding the police, our crime has gone up. Our children, uh, be a black on black crime is not being addressed the way it should be. We are the ones, the mothers and the fathers, we have to get a hold of our children. We can't leave this to anyone else. And then you want to cry later? No, we have to partner up with our police department. I remember when I was threatened, uh, when I first started this, I was a little crazy. I was young um, and um, I, I, I hated crack. I couldn't stand crack. Um, it, it, it killed my husband. My husband was shot in the head. Um, oh and we, we, yeah, we had to hide uh, because of the mafia. Um, and so I've been against, uh, you know, drugs for ages and years, but there was a hit on my family. And so what I had to do was I had to make sure that my kids were fingerprinted and that the police department knew who they were. And I was able to come back home. We cannot defund the police. We have to work with them. That's drastic measures. I'm going to be a devil's advocate for just for a moment. Um, I read somewhere that the policing diverts billions of dollars from schools, healthcare, and other vital programs that need more funding to strengthen our community. Mm -hmm. let's, let's address that. What do, you, what do you say about that? Again, um, if we could stop paying all these heads, like look at Kadanza, look what happened with Kadanza, head of our school. We have to stop paying people for what not happened? doing their what job. Happened? What happened? With not, for not doing their job. He just left and left the school system just in an uproar. Uh, but, you know, he took his money with him. Yeah. And again, we have to start addressing, you know, uh, these people in positions and the money that they're getting. Mm -hmm. That money belongs to the people. That's our taxpayer money. We should have a decision on how it is spent. And we don't. And we keep paying people for not doing their job. So those are the things we need to start addressing. See, I can't give you a concrete answer because I won't know until I get to that city council to see those books and to see what's actually really happening and where that money is really going. I heard you. <laughs> I hear you, I should say. I hear you. That, that's, that's a very touchy subject right there. It's a funny yes, subject. it is. It yeah, is. It is. You, you're looking it for is. reform, but there, you know, let's face it, there are a lot of corrupt um, and not great cops on the force. Right. Yeah. So people are, are more leaning towards diverting that money into community social issues than, um, than giving billions and billions of dollars each year or whatever right. to the police department. But you say that it can work out. We can work it out. We can work it out. We need to find out where our money is really going. We really need to invest. We need uh, an investigation. On, on most of these agencies to see what is really going on. People are scared to open up books. They're really scared to open up books. And we need to start opening up books, man. We really need to start opening up books. Listen, uh, I'm not saying that, um, that 
the cops don't defer that we should not defund them. I don't believe in defunding until I find out where the money is going. Chuck Schumer has asked for $80 billion for New York City housing. Okay, where do we put that money at and whose hands do we give it to? Do we give it back to NYCHA? Do we give it back to New York City housing that has done a lousy job? We don't even know the eighty thousand dollars, the eighty thousand dollars that's being given to them every week by HUD. The monitor can't even get an answer to that. So let's find the money. What where's that money at? Now he's the monitor over New York City Housing Authority, and he can't get in the answer to that. It's time to open up the books. Okay. I'm all right. So here's my, my next question. Tell us why, I know you went through everything, you said what you can do and all that, but what would, what would you do differently? What would you, this is a new age, uh, a new time. During this pandemic, uh, everybody is supposedly woke, woke, woke now. They're awake without coughing. <laughs> this time. Exactly, you know, exactly. What would you do differently? What I would do differently is make sure that the people have a voice in everything. Everything. And that is not being done. We are being muffled. We are being muffled in every turn of the way. Even in this campaign, you're being muffled. Uh, you know, there's just so much corruption. And it's sad because um, the real people that are out here fighting like you, boots on the ground, you know, we're boots on the ground. They don't want us to speak um, our mind. They don't want us to say the truth. And so what we need is the voice of the people that is being muffled. And that's where I am different. That's why I said we need to definitely talk about um, building task force of citizens and the working people. Everybody forgets about the working people. They have meetings that the working people can't go in. Well, we need to make meetings where the working people can come in and say what they got to say. Is their tax dollars that's paying for the police, for housing, for everything here we pay for. Mm -hmm. Bridges, tolls, we pay for that. Mm -hmm. We need a voice in everything that's happening in our city and our- And how would you go about doing that? Knocking on people's doors, waking the dead up, uh, you know? And that's again where the task force comes in. We have people with it. We have to have our citizens within the development outside. We need to work with all TA presidents. We need to work with boards, uh, private boards, because uh, this is not only a public housing issue. It's an issue for all of housing. Mitchell Lama, co-op, you, whatever you call it, we are all in trouble. You know, when I interview people like you, <laughs> I, I always wonder, where do you get your moxie from? Where, where, you get, where do you get this, this courage, this, as they say, as Langston Hughes would say, gumption? Where do you get this from? I what? pray a lot. Okay. Um, I get it from my, my God, my <laughs> grandmother. My grandmother was the fighter uh, mm -hmm. in our family. Um, one thing she taught me, and in Spanish we go, no te coma lo que no te gusta. Don't eat what you don't like. Oh, wow. Period. And so, you know, uh, watching for years uh, people that I've elected, that I've helped elect, turn their backs on you, made me want to do what I have to do. We that's, have to stop. That's a big reminder. Who have you, that's a good big reminder for me uh, to ask you this. Who have you helped elect? Because you've been, like you said, you've been in the, the trenches yes. for 35 years. What else have you done? Uh, well, you know, when uh, I, I had Westside High School, uh, when it was abandoned by the school construction company, it was left to shell. And um, we had uh, prostitution in there mm -hmm. and we had kids get hurt in there and we had um, someone die in there. And so I went to battle with the school construction company and I had the school rebuilt it again. It is now called Westside High. 
Um, so, I mean, I've been in the trenches so long. I've elected from the president on down, um, you know, Charlie Rango, Inez Dickens, you name them, I've been there. I've worked for Keith Wright. I've worked for Assemblyman Angelo De Toro. He was the one that gave me my start. I talk about him all the time. I remember at the age of 17 when uh, I was sitting on tenant patrol with my seniors and they said, you got to help us. You got to help us. I was like green. You know, I'm green. I don't know nothing from nothing. So, you know, with my little ghetto self, I took my butt to um, Assemblyman Angelo del toro and um and adam clayton powell jr with a whole stack of of uh, complaints and I, i'm still waiting for um us um adam clayton powell to give me an answer it's been 35 years later um and angelo the del toro who was the assemblyman uh called me about two weeks later and he said do you really want to help your people now i'm green i'm like yo man i, I wouldn't have came to you if i didn't if i didn't want you to help me and he looked at me and he gave me the keys to the West Side Office 461 Central Park West. Mm -hmm. And he gave me those keys and he told me, okay, fix what you want to fix. I've been running ever since. I hear you. I hear you. We don't have elected officials like that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, Olga Mendez, I remember uh, helping her and she paid my rent for three, she pay, paid my rent three months when I didn't have it. Where are those type of elected officials that really can give you a hand and not a handout? So we have, like I said, we're having an upcoming election. You're running for um, uh, council, district council, I'm sorry. City council. Uh, city council. Yes, we're having an upcoming election and you're running for city council. I endorse you if I was living in District 7, but I'm not. Um, yeah. Well, I think people should run out and vote for you. Who are you endorsing for mayor, if you don't mind saying? Actually, um, I'm not endorsing anyone. Okay. I'm not endorsing anyone. Uh, Eric Adams, uh, we grew up in the fight together. Uh, Eric Adams is my boy. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I like Jocelyn Taylor. Uh, I was looking at Diane Morales and then all this stuff started coming out on everybody. And I said, wait a minute. Every time I got ready to endorse somebody, something came out on them. And so, you know, I don't want to be part of that mess. Uh, we've been doing this 35 years. And so, you know, if it ain't clean, it ain't me. So, so you know the game, huh? <laughs> you can see through the fire. All right. I always say, <laughs> may God bless all of them. Um, uh -huh. Like I said, you know, me and Eric, we were um, born in the fight um, mm -hmm. and I wish him all the luck in the world. Um, but, um, you know, again, you know, stuff just came out on him. You know, Diane Morales, they tried to destroy her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm just sitting back waiting to see what else is going to happen. But uh -huh. Jocelyn, I like Jocelyn Taylor, who um, is from Pink Houses. Um, it was right in the, she is definitely, you know, from housing. Right. Um, and again, she's an activist, and nobody's even talking about her. No, they're not. No. But how can that's that? Okay, we're about to end the show and all that. But how can someone get in contact with you to work on your campaign to help you or support you and all that? Please go to my website, CarmenQuinones.com. You can give me a call at 347-499-0025. That is my campaign phone. Uh, get in touch with me. We're hiring youth, only youth. We're not, we're hiring youth, $15 an hour. Please, if you know a youth that needs a job, give me a call. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. You just watched Sister Talk TV show and you heard for, from city council candidate, Miss Carmen Quiones. She's a tireless activist who cares deeply about her community and wants you to come out and vote June 22nd, 2021. Before we end, Zaki just sent me a note. You all had a great conversation, but he wants to know this is a little trivial fun thing. Sure. Because you're not all political and all business from your conversation. So he wants to know, what's your favorite book, food? My favorite food? Actually, I'm a seafood girl. 
I love all kinds of seafood. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You would think I would say rice and beans, no. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to say that. How about yeah. your favorite book? My favorite book, The War on Puerto Ricans. The War on Puerto Ricans, okay. Yeah, um, no, who's your favorite person, someone who's living or dead, that you'd like to meet? That I would like to meet? Mm -hmm. Someone who would you like to meet who's living or dead? Maya Angelou. Oh, wow. Okay. And your favorite actor? You know, that's our background is acting, theater, and all that. Right. Um, my favorite actor? Denzel Washington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he will always be our favorite actor. <laughs> actor, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. In a time. Okay, right. so we are going to end this family and I would like to say, again, you just heard from Miss Carmen Quiones, a tireless activist who cares deeply about her community and wants you to come out and vote June 22nd, 2021. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay, amen. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to Sister Talk TV show. Thank you, Zakizi Starman, the creator and executive producer of Sister Talk. And thank you, Mark Lafee, associate producer of Sister Talk to TV show. As always, I'm wishing you peace, love, and light. And remember to stay in the light. That's it. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Let's go take a side by side no shot. To what you're going to do, don't worry. Okay. I'm going nowhere. If gotcha. you feel alone to the world, I'll be right there. Sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk. Talk.